This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, but we are back. Um, uh, one week we had to take off. Well, the understandable week off happened. And then I think we had the show with Omega. And then last week was supposed to happen. But uh, Holly ended up being like stuck out without internet and her computer and things and stuff was happening to her. Which, by the way, Holly's right here. Yeah. Hi. And, and <laughs> also with us is the cat. Hello. Yes, because not only do we need three people for this show right now, at least for this particular episode, I also am a lazy bum and don't want to have to go and rearrange the schedule again. <laughs> <laughs> At least I admit when I'm being a lazy bum, unlike some other heads of certain sites. <clears throat> yeah. Gee, I wonder what you're talking about. Yeah. What could that be about? Yeah, uh, it's pretty much out in the open now. I alluded to it a little bit on a previous show that, that the show is no longer a part of Project Million Entertainment. And, uh, well, the reasoning why is pretty much blown wide open. Um, basically, they're, they're kind of like Evil Core, almost. Although I don't think... Although they're not trying to take over the world, they're just um, they're just assholes. So yeah, yeah. Um, I think calling them evil gives them a little bit too much credit, to be honest. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, I don't think they're course, evil. I just think course. they're assholes. Yeah, very much so. Although that might be an insult to assholes too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so yeah. But there's a, there's a lot of info out there. Um, if you go onto uh, Tumblr, look under Vera Gun. She has her Tumblr post that has most, if not all, of the information on it compiled from other places, including myself. Uh, I put out a little statement, not just as me, but as the head of RT Gomer Productions, because as a site, we are not going to associate ourselves with PME. What this means for past episodes that still have like the stuff and everything, as far as the video stuff, that's easily remedied. The audio stuff, I will go through when I can. I, I will admit it might take a while to get up the motivation and the gumption to do it, but you know, at the same time, might be something you know to help as sort of a time capsule. I don't know, but that's going to be something forthcoming. And I did want to make that announcement here on the show. That way, if you listen to this and go back to listen to like episodes 50 through I, I think like 80 or something with the stuff on there, then you know you'd have a little bit of context. Yes, we used to be there. We're not anymore. This is why. Uh, and, and they put up another announcement on their Conman page, too. Well, Conman and their actual page, which I got snapshots of. So if they delete it again like they did with their last press releases, then we still have the proof of it, which is something that, that, that uh, the, the CEO does not know how to provide, apparently. You know, if you're going to say some shit, back it up. <clears throat> you know, and if you can't back it up, at least admit it. <laughs> Yeah, and watch him. Yeah. And, and if he comes after this show, <laughs> yeah, you can't do anything. And we're not bullying you. Mm. Yeah. Needless to say, we stand behind Count Jacula. So, um, again, if you want to get more info on that, uh, go to veragun.tumblr.com. I think that's her her Tumblr. But, uh, and, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I'm going by memory. Isn't there like a dash, Vera dash gun, or is it just one word? I'm trying to remember, but... I think it's just one word, but I can check real quick. Yeah, but uh, she's got all the information compiled there as it stands as of this recording. So, you know, you can find out for yourself here and there with all of the emails that have been sent from him, exchanges between him and other producers, other producers' stories. And, of course, the worst one of all, where uh, he he's, uh, he basically tried to use the memory of our dearly departed Justin... Justin Carmichael to try and make their business sound better when in fact Justin pretty much gave them the finger and walked away. So yeah. Well it was Justin, so it was much more polite than that. <laughs> well yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Although yeah, you know, I wouldn't blame him if it was if it was less polite. I would not blame him. I, even even I and when I when I've had my email exchanges with him have been more polite probably than necessary. But I like to try and take the higher ground, at least when it's between emails, supposed to be professional. So, you know, on this show, no holds barred. Fuck them. <laughs> so, anyway, um, <laughs> that, there's all that that's been happening. 
Uh, Valentine's Day had just passed. We did the constructive deconstruction episode of Valentine's Day, which was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> I'm going to bark rainbows again just thinking about it. <laughs> yes. We, we gave each other all of the diabetes. Oh. And uh, just today, actually, I, I, a friend of mine had come over from Tallahassee. In fact, she's sitting here listening to me do this, which is very one-sided for her, for her unfortunately. But, um, but she came over. We went out, and I actually did some kind of stock footage shooting out at our local park or whatever. I'm going to try and make it way into some videos or what have you. Um, because just having my opening intro for any part, any one of my review videos, it, it's kind of blandish. It's just shots of me in front of a background or whatever. I want something a little bit more action-y and, and kind of cool. So I, I put that out there a little bit. I'll, I'll try and have some kind of thing set up for it by the time the Mamma Mia review is released, if I ever get it released. <laughs> There's just been one thing after another. Um, so there's been that for me. It's pretty much the most that's been happening outside of PME drama. Uh, how, how has your, how's your, how's your week been, girls, ladies? Ladies. Yes. Ladies. <laughs> ladies. <laughs> mm. Um, it's been pretty good. I got a job offer, so that was exciting. Ooh, sweet. Yeah. And, and, and I take it you, did you accept it or, or have you? Yes, I did. Yay. So you're you're gonna you got a job, Kat has a job. I just started a new job this week, actually. Ooh. It was a little weird because I've worked for uh, Best Buy for like three years now, mm -hmm. and I actually moved jobs where I'm gonna do something different for Best Buy. Still gonna work at my store, but instead of working for the store, I work for corporate now. Um, oh. And I kind of I get to do my I just get like a list of things I'm supposed to do every week and I kind of work on my own schedule and it's pretty nice and I get paid more. Nice. Oh, Very nice. Cool. Very I don't nice. have like a boss hanging over me all day. I just have to like call my supervisor who's the supervisor for like 17 different people across the district. So she's never at my store except <laughs> to train me. So I have like nobody hanging over me at all. It's pretty nice. Very nice. Wow. So, so you're moving up. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's it's kind of a thankless job, but it's something that I'm pretty good at, so. Yeah. Now go. I have the theme song for the Jefferson stuck in my head. Because <laughs> <laughs> you said moving on up. <laughs> and in my head, I'm going to the east side. <laughs> to Best Buy Corporate. Yay! <laughs> And now uh, you you say corporate, and I'm thinking you're in like one of those like power suits or whatever. Oh hell no, hell no! <laughs> it's it's instead of selling something or like before, what I would do is stock counts and inventory. Instead, I set the what we call planograms, which are like what your store is designed to look like. Um, so it's it's nothing really fancy. I set planograms and put out displays and stuff, which is by no means interesting, but they pay you more because you you're basically your own boss. There you go. Uh, I wish I could be paid more for being my own boss. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and and I'm sure Holly who is who's well technically you're kind of your own boss as well in term in, at least in terms of websites because you you are now the new head editor of Nerdvice. Yes, I am. Yeah, so it's like no. So it's it, it's like cross pollination again because it's like you because it's like is that what we call it? That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> oh no, now it's like I'm breeding with myself. Maybe. I... Whoa. <laughs> Cuz it's like you've been on this show for the past couple of years, which has also been on Nerdvice. And now you're working Nerdvice and you're technically working over me along with me, so it's like I I I'm I'm my, I'm cross-eyed. I, I I'm now cross-eyed. Uh, uh, but yeah, but all, and all in all, it's awesome. It is very awesome. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, that news pretty much broke the internet for like two hours. Yes, because it's just all of the awesome. It really is. Because now we have Holly on Nerdvice, and 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 I'll admit I have I have been like sort of dissatisfied with some of the, some of the timing of some of my older posts, which they were they were all caught up now, but. But it was like for a while, it would be like, yeah, there was like something from like a few months back that I'd put up and nobody got it or forgot it or whatever. But, uh, but, but you know, hopefully things will be a little bit more, you know, to, to keep up with the uh, current trend. Right. Keeping and things that's, current. you know, that's why I took the position because Vera has needed some help because with her health issues, you know, sometimes she can't get to stuff for a couple weeks. And right. the other person who is an editor 
uh, went to school. Yeah. And so now it it was back to just Vera being the editor, and she needed some help. So. Yeah. Which which I admit I admit I, I probably should have offered at least for my own stuff, but at the same time I've also got my site to run too. And, and, you know, to make sure – and while it is a lot of, you know, people posting at their own leisure, there are some people I do take care of and post for them like Lacey and Spaz Fox and Diamanda and all of them. So uh, – and and recently also, I want to announce it on this show, we have also picked up Mel the Office Gamer Girl. Who does like, like the obscure retro games and the little penguin and, and the cute theme song. She is awesome. She is a, <laughs> she is a treat. <laughs> she really is. Need to get her on the show sometime. Uh, which also she doubles as my shout out because if you haven't watched Mel the Office Gamer Girl stuff, you can watch it. it it's uh, her the stuff that I'm having put up. It's all of her older stuff but at her request. Start from the beginning and work up, and um, you can start watching her, some of her older episodes right there on the site. So, and if you're watching this on Nerdvice and don't know what my site is, it's rtgomer.com. <laughs> uh, so, uh, do you, do you happen to have any shout outs, uh, Holly? Um, I'm trying to think if I have anything good this week. It's like I have a bunch of tabs open and then I lose the stuff. Oh, okay. So this is actually really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, if you go to, um, CBS and, and look up the prices, right. Um, some friends of mine who are also producers are on the show from Valentine's day. Oh yeah. And it's, um, Psycho Taku and, and Psycho Neko, and um, yeah, they were on the show, and they might have won a car. Now that is awesome. <laughs> may or may not have won a car. May or may yes. not. How do you know? Go and watch and find out. Or That's just right. I actually watch Prices Right like every day at work. Yeah. Uh, I haven't watched that show in a while. I mean, not not. I think the last time I actually sat and watched an entire episode, you know, knowingly and, and, and sought it out, was when Bar Barker was hosting. That's how long it's been for me. I mean, I've seen bits of, of Drew Carey doing it, and, and from what I've seen, he's doing a good job. So I, sh I should sit down and watch a whole episode. And you know what? Psycho Neko being on the show, I, I think there's there's my reason right there. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's so funny. Like, they get called down, and Mark is like... Just going crazy. <laughs> and it, like as it cuts back up to Drew at, at that moment when he's saying, you know, that they'll be right back, you know, you can tell that Drew is laughing at Mark's reaction to the entire thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, so, uh, yeah. So uh, do you have anything, Kat? I have no, no shout outs. You know what my shout out is? Everyone should go fucking see the Lego movie. I heard it's good. I've heard it's really, really good. It's amazing. Yes. I, I'll be honest. I'm so bad at keeping up with movies. I didn't even know there was a Lego movie until people started talking about having seen it. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> so good. But but uh, but I'm willing to bet Josh Hadley will still find a complaint for it because it's after oh. 95. Oh sure. Let me let me ask him when I podcast with him later today. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's right, because you're you're now pretty much a regular fixture on What the Fuck Now. Yeah, they, they asked me to stay, and I said, well, there might be a couple weeks when I can't do it, but yeah. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, you do, you, now you're on, what, three podcasts now? Four, because um, I do a monthly one with some of my friends who aren't internet producers. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so it's a lot, which I do, I do a lot of podcasts, and I don't make any money off of it. So people are like, well, I do this many podcasts. I'm like, well, you make money off of things, even if it's not a lot. <laughs> I, don't, I don't make any money. I just sit, kind of just sit here and talk, and sometimes people listen to me, and that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we, 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 we used to maybe make a little bit of money off of podcasting, but, but then um, somebody decided, you know, not – to pay because she wasn't satisfied with everybody. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, but I, should, uh, I should say my view stated earlier is my own personal view and doesn't relate to any company that I may be working with <laughs> or volunteering for or any of that. Right. So. Right. <laughs> our views are our own. Always on the show. Our views are our own. Oh, but uh, speaking of the show, we've got news to go over. We've got a few weeks of news to to hit. I've tried to narrow them down as much as I can. 
some of them are some of them are just what what just what the hell are you thinking? I, I'm looking through. I don't think. Uh, okay, I, I I think I do have like one or two that's gonna probably piss people off, which eh, par for the course. So um, uh, the first one, uh, Roseland. I don't know what state this is, but it's just in Roseland. A Roseland man was ordered hell on $75,000 bail Sunday after he allegedly tried to steal a woman's car from her garage, only to get trapped inside when the woman closed the garage door. Mm. Worst thief ever. <laughs> and it's like, okay, no, you just, just, just. <laughs> okay, you, you, you went in the victim's garage, demanded the victim hand over the keys, and she did so. And then closed the door behind her and called the police. The, it, it, you are stealing the car anyway. You are going to be in legal trouble. Go forth and bust the garage door down. <laughs> There's a certain level of stupid at play here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is actually um, in the Chicago area, by the way. Oh, that's right. Now, now I remember why I put it up front, because it is Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, oh, it's like really, dude. This this is this is one of those things. I, I this has got to be a running gag because because you know if, if you're going to commit this crime, do it this way. Not that you should, but if you're going to, do it this way. <laughs> uh, it always seems to happen when when Holly's on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but the guy is in custody because of his own stupidity. Uh, and the people in jail are probably laughing at him. You did what? You didn't just drive <laughs> through the door? Oh, you're an idiot. Oh. Yeah, see, that, that was my automatic first thought. It was like, dude, you had the keys in the car. Why didn't you just back through the garage door? Even yeah. if you then ditched the car, like at Fucking least noob. you're not in jail. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and, and of course, if you get away with it, then the, the victim is going to be out the money anyway. What's a few extra off of your back? You know? I'm not a smart man, and but I know what love is. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently the guy stealing this was Forrest Gump. Good to know. <laughs> Even yes. Forrest Gump would not no, do this. No, Forrest Gump would have run away. Yeah, <laughs> he, he would be smarter than this. You know, I mean, shit. You know, whether it's the book Gump or the movie Gump, he would be smarter than this. He's Gump. He's Gump. He's gone. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Oh, but um, but you know, Forrest Gump. He's he's known for having like that superhuman running ability. Well, oh, this one's out of Florida. Take a shot. <sighs> a naked man with superhuman strength was shot to death, to death Tuesday night after assaulting a former police officer and biting part of a teenager's face off. According to Palm Beach County Sheriff Rick Bradshaw, the naked man was walking down a road near Delray Beach when, for reasons that remain unclear, he attacked a 66-year-old former NYPD officer. The retired cop was rushed to the hospital with serious injuries. Holy shit. Meanwhile, the naked man continued up the road where he encountered and chased a man walking with his 10-year-old son. Later, the naked man attacked an 18-year-old man, biting his face until the teen stabbed the man with a box cutter or knife. By that time, the police officers had arrived on the scene and attempted to taser the nude man. You know, and and this is this is the no shit quote of of the story here. He's obviously delirious on something. No shit, really. Wow, wow. I just wow. I feel so informed now. Uh huh. He's a huge guy. He takes a fighting stance. They're trying to get him on the ground. He starts charging them. Uh, this is uh, what the sheriff was telling the Palm Beach Post here. The taser did not affect him. Well, of course, you're on bath salts. Of course, it's not going to affect you. I'm, I'm calling it. I'm calling bath salts. A deputy... Well, I would, too, just purely by the face eating. Yeah. Because, um, you know, something like that only needs to happen once before you're just going to naturally make the assumption of bath salts. <laughs> because, you know, how many face eating incidents do you usually hear about in a year? <laughs> Always in Florida, though. Always in Florida. Always. Like, what the hell? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm in the panhandle because it's far removed from the bath salts. And now <laughs> just watch next week's show. We're going to have a story of bath salts from the panhandle. It would be my luck. Uh, but it's just just random. It's like it's like I'm glad the people that you know the victims are apparently are OK, thankfully. And 
I'm, I'm just kind of sad this guy had to die, because I really want to know, dude, what the hell were you on? I, I don't get to know this now, because he, he was killed. Well, there's called an autopsy? Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I would be surprised if they didn't do an autopsy to find out what he was on. Yeah, and and, and there goes my brain forgetting, oh yeah, t- autopsy, duh. <laughs> Oh. You gotta watch a lot of television and remember things about crime shows. Yeah. Oh. And and speaking of television, uh, you, you hear all sorts of weird things that happen on television that you would think would not be true. You know, it, and it, it ranges from these crime shows to soap operas or whatever. And at first, when I read this story about a 44-year-old fetus that had been found in an 84-year-old Brazilian woman, I was skeptical. So was my girlfriend. But we both checked, and this is a thing that can happen. That a a dead fetus, instead of being ejected from the body, somehow stays in there, becomes calcified, at least in this case became calcified, and just stayed there. Didn't grow, didn't do anything. And this happened for 44 years to this 84-year-old Brazilian woman. And the story that I grabbed this from quotes the Daily Mail, but I but knowing the Daily Mail and their reputation, I checked with other resources, and the other resources do check out. So the discovery came last Friday when the woman's intense stomach pains landed her in a hospital in Tocantins in the state of Brazil. X-rays revealed the unthinkable. A stone baby! As the international... <laughs> that sounds horrible! It does, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's just... What the hell? I don't... We don't even know what happened. Of course, let's see. For G1, the woman says she became pregnant more than 40 years ago, but suffered pain during the pregnancy and visited a healer for help. Not a doctor, a healer. There's there's an issue there. Well, right, but it was 40 years ago, it, so she would have been around 40 years old. Yeah. <laughs> and she's living... Somewhere in Brazil, I don't know where this is, but it's central Brazil, so I don't think it's a hugely populated area. So, you know, (laughs) probably not a whole lot of doctors. Probably not. And and poor cat, I think she's squicked over there. That's so weird. It is. And and no, no, the the last sentence is is. The thing that, like, yeah. if you're going to get grossed out by anything, it's that. And here it is. Oh, oh. In December, a nearly identical case was fa- announced in Colombia. That woman opted to have surgery, you know, to have it taken out. The Brazilian says she does not want the fetus removed. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's right, kids. Because I guess she grew attached to it. I don't know. Well, it's pretty oh, good. That <laughs> sounds like a bad pun or something. That oh, was a really awful pun. Yeah. That was. Oh, I, I, I think I think even Iron Liz would slap me for that one. I mean, I, I, I would just guess that it's like she's 84, and you know that would have to be an actual surgery she probably just doesn't want to have abdominal surgery at 84 years old and i can't really say that i blame her for that I mean, yeah I'm still gonna puke though but it's still <laughs> yeah it still grosses me out <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah i don't even have that equipment and it's, it's like eh, no no oh Oh, right. If you just think about anything in your body that is not supposed to be in your body for 40 plus years, like, sorry, that's my iPad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hello, hello to Holly's iPad. <laughs> hello, iPad. <laughs> um, but yeah, like if you think about anything not, you know, normally in your body or that shouldn't be in your body for 40 plus years, it's it's gross. <laughs> it is. Just a little bit. Yeah. Oh, but this one is not so much as gross, but it is silly. A French judge hearing an assault case this week declared a frozen chicken to be a weapon. The ruling in eastern France led to a 35-year-old man be- being given a year in prison for smacking his girlfriend with a chicken he grabbed from her refrigerator during a drunken argument at her home. <laughs> the defendant, was su- who was subject to a restraining order, trashed the woman's apartment after clobbering her with the chicken, France TV said. The local French site 
said the court may have set a legal precedent for France by concluding the frozen bird amounted to a weapon. I will admit, as silly as it is to use a chicken in this way, I can't disagree. Yeah, it is a weapon. It is. It's, a, it's a frozen, you know, solid object yeah, that you and... beat a woman with. That would be a weapon, yeah. Yeah, that, that, would, that would be it. So technically he's not wrong, but you use a chicken? I mean, just... I mean, you, you gotta use what's on your hand to beat your women, right? I mean, whatever's I... there. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I've heard of, to be fair, I've heard of worse. I mean, it's not the worst thing I've heard. I've heard of people beating, I've heard of somebody, like, beating somebody with a baby. <laughs> I shit you not. I mean, I mean, granted, it was somebody trying to get somebody away from her, because, you know, she was defending herself. She just... Every time we talk about horrible stories involving children, it just takes me back to that one episode, and then, like... Oh, People yeah. who listen to this show know what I'm talking about, so I'm not going to tell you again because yeah. uh, I don't need to traumatize more people. But but for those yeah. who don't, I, I will give you an episode number, episode twelve. I believe that is the number. It's the it's it's the show with Andrew Dickman, clearly labeled. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, so, but um, but before you do that, take another shot because we're going right back to Pinellas County, Florida. Hmm. Uh. A man Florida, st- why can't I quit you? <laughs> <laughs> I've been asking myself that for the past year. Uh, a man stole a large amount of food, well, cat food rather, from Walmart that said he had planned to sell to his friend with 300 cats. Officers responded to the Walmart on U.S. <laughs> Highway 19 in North Clearwater, well, north in Clearwater rather, to investigate a shoplifting case involving cat food. Loss prevention staff had detained James Lawlor for loading up a shopping cart full of cat food and then walking to his car without paying. Well, you know, most people, when they steal from Walmart, they at least try to be secretive. He's not even hiding anything. He's just like, fuck you guys, I'm not paying for this. <laughs> so, so, balls for him, you know. He's, he's got balls. Oh, so, <laughs> first of all, where do you keep 300 cats? <laughs> I have no idea. I, I hope this Second person... Of all, how lazy is this person with 300 cats that they can't steal their own damn cat food? <laughs> they can't no, no, no. steal their own damn cat food. <laughs> <laughs> and three, um, Lawler was arrested and transported to the county jail with one count of grand theft. Grand theft cat food, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> grand theft cat food. That's oh going to be God. the next video game. It's going to be so popular with cat ladies. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, next thing you know, your grandma's playing a game where she's beating up hookers and (laughs) random people on the street. Oh, God. And it's all downhill from there. Oh, wow. So, this next one, this next one I put in here because it's PSA time. Because this this really needs to be said. A downriver stretch of I-75 is back open after being shut down early Thursday morning because of a jackknife semi-truck. The semi-truck was stuck in the northbound lanes between Sibley and Telegraph Roads. I don't know exactly where this is, and I I cannot tell from the roads, so... (sighs) Excuse me. It's a real show. The trailer tipped on his side, and the cab got stuck pointing up in the air. It wasn't immediately clear what caused the crash, but the driver was okay. I can make a pretty educated guess. You know, since I have the driving experience, and I know how people tend to act on the road, especially in places like Baltimore... Or New York, etc. And I'm willing to bet that this driver jackknifed because somebody cut in front of him and he had to swerve and get out of the goddamn way in order to, you know, not hit the car in front of him. So he jackknifed, that happened, and thankfully the driver's okay, and and, and, and hopefully that, you know, yeah, hopefully, yeah. So, again, PSA, don't just dart out in front of semi-trucks. They cannot stop on a dime, people. They just can't, especially when they're loaded. And no, I will not try this because if you try, you may jackknife. This is, you know, basic physics, people. Do you know this? Well, no, they don't. <laughs> yeah, well, if you drive in Baltimore, apparently they don't. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's like Omega was saying like a while back, you know. Welcome to Baltimore. Pass on the right. And it's Welcome what to Baltimore, they do. please don't kill everyone. Exactly. Oh, 
I miss. I will. Admit, I do miss going through Baltimore because it gave me an excuse to roll down the windows and blast "Good Morning Baltimore." <laughs> I I don't miss anything about Baltimore. Mm. <laughs> nothing. Uh, nothing at all, huh? No, well, my friends, but otherwise, no. Yeah. Oh, and we're back up to Chicago. Lovely. <laughs> Hi, Chicago. I want to be in you sometime this year. Oh. No, not not right now though, because fuck, it's so cold. I, yeah. I would I would gladly take the fuck it's so, so cold because I have a scarf and I have an overcoat that I can use, and it kept me pretty well in Atlanta on the way back from Magfest. So. Oh. Yeah, but you don't want any part of this uh, nonsense weather we've got going on right now with all the people dying, in car accidents and shit. Yeah, good point. So okay, so maybe later, maybe later. Oh, so administrators at a school in the south suburbs of Chicago are up in arms over a state law, House Bill 0183, that requires schools to post small signs announcing that guns cannot be carried in schools. Well, what would the problem with that be? I mean, what is it, what is it a gun range school or something? And, I mean, is it the Leroy Brown School of, of Gun Handling or something? I don't know. Uh, and if you get the reference, you get a cookie. <laughs> Uh, the new law relates to a new concealed carry license law, reports the Southtown Star suburban newspaper. Schools in Illinois did not allow guns previously. Now, though, schools and churches and government agencies, liquor stores, and certain other organizations must post 4 by 6 inch stickers as visible reminders that guns are forbidden on the premises. Which, in some cases, may be a little redundant, but, you know, some people just need that reminder right out there. Yeah, <laughs> no gun. I'm very gassy this week. Uh, many schools in the Chicago area, and presumably other parts of the state, have already posted the small stickers in compliance with the state law. Uh, you know, it's a good thing. Others expect to post them over the next couple of weeks. Good. Some school officials aren't happy about the stickers because, get this, they contain a very basic image of a gun. Yeah. And it's like... <laughs> See, here I thought we were going to go into, you know, conservatives going, well, I should be allowed to carry a gun in the school. But no, it's because it has a picture of a gun. Wow. I mean, there is a level of stupid going on here that is really just sad. Uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's a gun that says, hey, leave your guns at home. And, and this person, uh, Tr uh, Teresa Nolan, the principal of Tinley, Tinley, Tinley Park High School. Tinley Park. Tinley Park. Thank you. She was saying, it's bothersome to, have to post a sticker of a gun that says, hey, folks, leave your guns at home. But that's the problem. They're needed. <laughs> and this is a law. You have to do this. See, what's great about this is that my school mascot has a gun. Really? really? Yeah, and my school mascot, I went to Old Mill High School in Millersville, Maryland, right outside of Baltimore. And we were the Old Mill Patriots. And our Patriot had a musket. Oh. <laughs> like, we're one of the only armed uh, mascots. That's kind of awesome. Yeah. I don't know if the uh, the big portrait is still there or not, but we were the only ones with a gun that I know of. <laughs> yeah, I think my mascot had a spear, but we were the Vikings. <laughs> and you don't hear sense. a lot of, you know, spear deaths nowadays. <laughs> oh, no. no. I mean, I mean, the worst you the worst you might hear is uh, an attempt to drive by shooting with a bow and arrow. You know, you don't you don't hear about drive by spearing. I mean, we could make that happen. We could try and make that a thing. Oh God, get get <laughs> get like get, just get get like the nerf or the foam spears though, because you know we don't want to hurt anybody. Or at least I don't. Uh, you know, just throw that, and then they'll be like, they're like, what the fuck? That's right, guys. Uh, Gomer's advice to criminals only go so far. Yes. <laughs> Help you get away from the law, yes. Yes. <laughs> Help you break the law, no. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but she, the, the, the principal, Nolan, stressed that she is very concerned with safety and security and concerned that somehow someone could wrongly interpret an image of a gun emblazoned with a universal sign for prohibiting something. It, what is there to wrongly interpret? It's saying, no guns allowed here. Uh, yeah, I feel like that maybe is just like a bad writing of that sentence because then it goes on to say that 
She said, I think the general public will be alarmed by it and wonder if people have been allowed to bring guns to school in the past. Yeah, you know what? I honestly, even before any kind of science, my high school, as far as I know, we do not have like the no gun signs up. And until this woman brought it up, I never thought, I wonder if people have been allowed to bring guns to school in the past. You know, and, and even then, it's pretty much just a mockery of, oh, I wonder why. And I can already answer that question. No, they weren't. Not within the last hundred years, as far as I know. It's just, no. No, no, no. Are, are the signs a little redundant? Maybe, because it's kind of a kind of a thing. You don't take a gun to school. You shouldn't be taking a gun to school. You know, that sort of thing. But... So the stickers are a little redundant, but they're understandably redundant. I can understand that. I can get behind them because some people need the idiot, you know, the idiot thing in the face. Sure. But to take it to where this lady is taking it, no. No, it's just, they're signs. They're signs, ma'am. They are. They're not going to hurt anybody. People they're signs are... that are not any bigger than the size of your hand. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's for the idiots who don't understand you don't take a gun to school you know and this is not even counting the 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 obvious big you know the big ones i'm talking about just people that oh I'm, i have a gun i'm gonna take it to school you know not in not in any way attempting to hurt anybody you can't right do that. well I, you know it's it's a concern because of the there was a ban on concealed carrying yeah and now there isn't and so you know there's this concern that you know, kids will think that if they have a permit, that they can take their gun to school. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's just, uh, I mean, it, it should be, it should be a no-brainer, but, you know, for some people it's not a no-brainer, so. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and, and speaking of idiots, a restaurant outside of Oklahoma City is facing criticism after its outspoken owner made a series of inflammatory comments after one of his former customers, who is disabled, complained that it had been banned from the establishment. Oh, well, this customer must have been a real jackass. Matt Gard claims that the owner of Gary's Chicharro's restaurant, Gary James, banned him from the restaurant because of his wheelchair. James, however, says otherwise. They created an issue. You have only one time here. You create an issue, you're out forever. Well... Guard claims that's just a weak excuse and that James's real problem is that he's on disability. James doesn't deny that he thinks some people shouldn't patronize his restaurant. Well, if you work, you own a business, pay your taxes, you're more than welcome here. So wait, it, it, so does that mean most people, you know, going by, going by this, if you're going to be strict with this, if you work, you own a business, pay your taxes. What if we don't own our own business? Would the other two would be would the other two be enough to allow us to come and eat at your restaurant, or would as we well, have to have all three? You, as long as you work, comma you own a business, comma yeah. pay your taxes. I know I, I'm I I I'm, I think I'm splitting hairs there, but uh, if you're on welfare, stay at home, spend my money there. I don't deal with these people walking down the street with no jobs on welfare. <sighs> Another anti-welfare dude. Yeah, you know what? Not everybody who's on welfare necessarily wants to be on welfare. I would say a good chunk, if not – I would say most of the people who are on welfare would like to have a job. They would like to you know, go and, and, and work, you know. but work is eluding them, and they need to support themselves somehow. They need help, and maybe, maybe they have enough for the month to where, okay, all of my basic needs are, are met. And we can treat ourselves to something. Maybe we'll go to a restaurant. Why not? You know? Oh. But, but you know, it, it, it's just one of, it's just, ah. And the, this guy, uh, James, has, yeah. Uh, I'll just read the statement. Guard also claims that James has routinely turned away customers for decades. He doesn't like certain people of race, color, ethnicity, Guard said of James. So here's the kicker right now. James told KFOR that he's owned Gary's Chicaros for 44 years. So he thinks I could he think I could, well he thinks he could spot a freak or a faggot. Really? Really you you, uh, you can, yeah, probably not. No, because 
you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I have a guest in, in my part of the studio right now and I cannot look at her. She's just, you know, she looks like somebody who likes to wear ripped jeans and, and, and has red hair. So it's like, you know, I can't tell. I can tell she's female, you know, but I can't tell anything else around there, you know, or, or, or at least she has the typical, you know, biological, physiological setup of a female. The, the typical, so, you know, that's what I can tell from just looking at her. You know, I can't tell her sexual orientation. I can't tell what she likes to do in the bedroom from just looking at her. Sorry, I just can't do it. Oh. And, and of course, the restaurant's official t-shirt also makes it clear that a faggot isn't welcome in James's establishment. It also features that word, the N-word, and threatens violence against Muslims, Democrats, and members of many minority groups. Wow. Yep. You you you're out and proud, aren't you? <laughs> oh, and, and proud he is. He's proud to wear the shirt. I really don't want gays around. And any man that will compromise his own body will compromise anything. <sighs> compromise your own body. Okay. If, if if a man is having sex with a woman, isn't he compromising his own body to some degree anyway? Wouldn't you think? I mean, he, he is putting himself, in some part of himself, into some place that he may or may not know have disease. And, it's, and the same goes, you know, for any place, you know, for any coupling, you know, thing or what have you. You don't know for sure. You have the other person's word. Now, granted, if you're getting into this, getting to this point, yes, you're going to trust that person because they have earned your trust. I would Unless hope. you're fucking a prostitute. I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Even prostitutes, though. I mean, especially in Nevada, you they, they have to be clean. Otherwise, they get in legal trouble. So, you know, they kind of have to be. But the point is, you're, you're compromising yourself no matter what. So does that mean that any man that would compromise his own body? So you want only white, middle-aged... Old, you know, white, older Republican asexuals, Racist. yeah, racists, you know, homophobic um, uh, asexual virgins, you know, because um, there's this site called Return of Kings. I, I think they would be very, very, very happy at your <laughs> establishment. Oh, but there, I, I read some of the comments for this when I originally found it, and there were people like, "Yeah, let's go and rough them up, burn, burn the place, whatever." It's like, no, 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 you don't do that. You do exactly, you know, like we're doing with Project Million Entertainment. You spread this negative information around. In this case, granted, in this case, the guy is still shooting himself in the foot because he's not denying anything. So, um, but still, the negative negativity will get around. Yeah, it gets him a little bit of publicity. Maybe he'll get some new customers, but I think in, in the whole, it's going to be kind of negative for him. So, you know, so, you know, that. but that's what you do. Yeah, they say no press, you know, is bad, but uh, too much negative press is not good either. Well, see, the unfortunate problem here is that he lives in Oklahoma, and in Oklahoma, that sort of attitude isn't exactly frowned upon in many parts of Oklahoma. Uh, this is true. Uh, damn. I was trying to apply logic again, wasn't I? Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. So, un unfortunately, that sort of attitude will probably bring in more customers damn oh but it, but it is right. so then the best thing that you can do is be a freak and go to this restaurant and yeah so he gets your money but you also get to make him really uncomfortable for you know like at least an hour there so go. oh god oh oh becky we're going to oklahoma and, and we're gonna go find this place and and we're, we're going to have one of our special talks there <laughs> I'll let you think of that what you will, audience. <clears throat> well, the last one we have is it's out of Missouri. Oh, lovely. Two Republican lawmakers in Missouri have now filed ar articles of impeachment against the state's Democratic governor, Jay Nixon. State Representative Mike Moon became the latest GOP legislature, la legislator rather, to join the effort to remove Nixon after State Representative Nick Marshall put the wheels in motion earlier this month. According to the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, Moon's articles of impeachment cited Nixon's failure to call a special election to fill a vacate, vacant congressional seat in Missouri, 
Marshall, on the other hand, was driven to take action after Nixon issued an executive order last year permitting same-sex couples married in other states to file joint federal income tax returns. So we have we have one guy who, who's just basically like, well, you, you, you need to fill the vacant thing. You didn't call the special election. Maybe he had a reason to. I'm not so privy on this one. Do you have any idea, any specifics on that one, Kat? No, I don't pay attention to um, anything that uh, Republicans do in my state uh, because because <laughs> I live in St. Louis and St. Louis, like the city and everything, tends to lean pretty Democratic. And then on the other side of the state, you've got Kansas City, which tends to lean pretty Democrat. Uh, tem- <laughs> Sorry, I can talk Democratic. And then everything else in between is all severely Republican. Yeah, I, I, oh God, how many times have I, I've, I've drove through Missouri quite a few times. How many goddamn conservative signs out there that just make me want to Jesus? Yes, big signs that just say Jesus. Yes, Jesus, and then the next one up. Oh, come visit our porn store. <laughs> that's, that's Missouri for you. Yes. Uh, uh, Nixon said Thursday. Uh, he'd like the state to vote on same-sex marriage, adding that he'd vote to lift the ban on gay nuptials. So if that goes through, Missouri would be another state that would that would have same-sex marriage. Uh, wasn't there like one or two others, like like recently in the past couple of weeks that that started? Oh yeah, Virginia, because Virginia is starting at least starting towards that direction now, and all of the fall wells are probably exploding at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, and the governor, for his for his part, he he was elected for, to a second term in 2012, and he dismissed the impeachment effort as a publicity stunt. I mean, that's all it really is is just some um, Republicans trying to make themselves look like they're doing anything uh, by just doing the only thing they know how to do is getting rid of the competition. Yeah, through any means necessary. Yeah, rather than actually do something. You know, they can just blame lack of progress on another person. Of course, because, you know, it's never their fault. You know, if, if things are being – negative things are being said about them, then it, no, it's not something they did. These people are just horrible people that just don't want to see us do well. Oh, but who am I talking about? Am I talking about the GOP or am I talking about PME? Hmm. You have to wonder. <laughs> oh, God. It, it, you know – this this show finally has a TV tropes page, and I, I'm just expecting people who actually give a damn about the TV tropes page to finally start up a take that and just like this show this episode will like fill a whole bunch of them already. <laughs> oh, so uh, so yeah. Uh, unless unless you two have some some other thoughts for the news, uh, real quick. I thought we do have about 12 minutes left. I do have a BuzzFeed article. We're not going to have time to go through all of it, but we do have – there are highlights I wouldn't mind going through. Um, and the uh, BuzzFeed list in question is 45 things I learned at the Creation Museum because that's cool. another thing that happened recently. There was the, nice. the the debate between Bill Nye and Ken Ham because you know that that's productive. You know, which Bill Nye, to his credit, you know, not only did he answer everything and, and was able to, you know, he, he's, you know, he's doing the science thing. He's, you know, backing his shit up, and he's also imploring to the people of Kentucky, yeah, don't let, you know, science is important. Make sure it's taught in schools. Which, you know, I like it. Ken Ham is more. Cir- his logic is to use one of uh, two's metaphors. His logic is more circular than Charlie Brown's head. <laughs> so. um so this article writer went to the Creation Museum to see this debate, and he notes that the museum is huge and really nice, like one of the nicest museums he's ever been to. It took him over three hours to go through it, and through the course of three hours, he learned just about everything he could possibly ever want to know about creationism. And this is the list of things he learned. And again, we're not going to go through all of them. We've got about ten minutes left. Um, the first one right here. The Creation Museum really needs to get better displays of children who have been deprived of creationism. And and, and on, if you're watching the video version, I'm going to show it here. Uh, it shows a, a boy and a girl with the speech bubbles. Come on, let me show you the rest. You know, and saying, I never heard this before in school. Because it's just, they do look extremely fake. And, and the girl looks kind of creepy. 
At least from but, that angle. Uh, what's with that boy's hair? Like I don't know. It's like, are, 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 what do they? Are they trying to emulate Bieber's hairstyle and failing? Or, 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 first of all, if you're gonna emulate hairstyles, don't go with Justin Bieber. Just, just saying. Uh, and if you're gonna fail at something, at least try to make it more awesome. You know, you you can still work with it. It's just you didn't. Uh, I mean, even their bodies look kind of weird shaped. Yeah, it's just. His shoulders are too wide, yeah. or something. Yeah. It's like their their shoulders are too round, like across the front, and then they look like they're wearing shoulder pads. Yeah, because they're too wide, then it like then their arms sort of look like they don't have arms. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's like because it, if you look at the girl's sleeve where her arm is bent, it looks like there's just like nothing in there. Yeah. There's. You know, there's there's no structure in there, no internal structure. It's just, yeah. Uh. Can I just say, I never heard this before in school. <laughs> uh, Bro, do you even grammar? I know, right? <laughs> oh, and, 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 and what school did you go to? You, obviously, you did not go to a school that's in a predominantly Christian country. Because I don't know about everybody else, but um, yeah, people talked about religion in school. You know, in public school, not in a not in an official capacity, but you know, there were people with their Bibles around. You had the prayer groups and the, the see you at the poll stuff and all of that. I know I participated in some of it because that's where I was at that point in my life. But you know, but saying you've never heard of this before it, it is unless you were homeschooled and severely sheltered. I doubt it. At least in this country, I highly doubt that. So you probably heard of it. So, let's see. Number two, animals use logs from trees knocked down by the Great Flood as rafts to get to different continents. Oh, so that's how they traveled. Oh, right. yeah, because animals can do that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's one thing for, like, birds to fly long distances, you know. In that, the rain for 40 days and 40 nights on a log. Yeah, yeah. no, that just does not happen that way. No! <laughs> Because how are you going to survive for 40 days and 40 nights? I mean, even if you have a raft with, like, let's say, 200 animals, you know, at least by the time the 40 days and 40 nights is up and the water is receded enough to where you can actually go back on land, there's going to be maybe two or three animals left, I would think. You know, just saying. Uh, I'm going to skip down a little bit. Oh, to number seven. And... This is how excited kids get when their mothers buy them annual passes to the Creation Museum. Again, if you're just listening to the audio, not watching the video, it's a sign of this kid saying, Mom just bought an annual pass. And he looks like, he's, I think they're supposed to be going for excitement, but he, he, just look like, he just looks like they pointed a potato cannon at his face. <laughs> it's just, just, ah! His tongue is sticking out in sort of a gross way. Yeah, that's just... See, I, I thought he was at the doctor's office. <laughs> yeah. Open like, your mouth. You're going to put that where? Your say, uh... Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. That, that just reminds me of the of the Bill Ingvall story he told about when his son went to go get a physical. You know, <laughs> just, just when he realized what the physical actually entails. Oh, dear. And the next one, and this one I admit is it's more for, for the... Uh, the uh, penis lovers in in my audience. Adam was quite hot. He was like the Caesar Milan of his time. And the picture that you see, if you're watching the video version, um, he's he's got a sheep in his arm, which which makes it very unfortunate this implications. Is so good, you guys. <laughs> yes. Why is there a penguin next to a fox? <laughs> Because remember, in the Garden of Eden, all animals were there, and they were all herbivores. Remember this. This is what these creationists happen to believe. Actually, now that I look closer at it, it's probably not even a fox. It looks more like, I don't know if it's a fox or if it's some kind of, I don't know if it's... I think they invented an animal. They must have. Uh, they were like, we don't really know what animals do or look like. So we're just going to, like, make this thing that looks kind of like a cat, kind of like a fox. Yeah. Yeah, it looks, you know, I look a little bit closer at it. It's like, basically, it looks like a bobcat without spots on it. I, but I really couldn't tell you what animal that's supposed to be. <laughs> 
sort of wolfish around the face, catish around the ears. Yeah, uh, like I just saw the general shape and the color, and that's why I said fox. And then I looked at it and I was like, wait a second. Oh, that's just. It's, but it, either way, it's a carnivore. <laughs> right. And it's hanging out there with some kind of wildebeest and a penguin. <laughs> and I don't even want to know what, what Adam is going to do with that little lamb there. Yeah. I don't know, but it looks scared. It does look, it looks really sad, actually. It's got, like, these <laughs> droopy eyes. I feel bad for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, so we got time for one more. Um, I'm going to go with, actually, to, to go on the whole herbivore thing, number 13. Dinosaurs were vegetarians. <sighs> it's like, oh. right. Some were, you know, grant you, grant you, some of them were, but not all of them, you know. And this actually reminds me of something else that I saw was like, uh, I don't know if it was like an actual news article or news story or whatever. It was just a clip from a paper. And it's, it, I think it was uh, stating that Ken Ham, or, or at least I had a picture of Ken Ham claiming that the reason why the Tyrannosaurus Rex, you know, was, was the way it was is because it couldn't masturbate and thus couldn't sin <laughs> or something to that degree. Cause it's like, oh my God. it's like, really? Oh my God. That, that has to be a troll or something, but. But this particular picture, which should be up on the video uh, stream now, what did dinosaurs eat? God said, to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for food. Genesis 1.30 <laughs> Before man's fall, animals were vegetarians. In a very good creation, no animal would die, so there were no carnivores. All the beasts of the earth, not just the beasts of the field that God brought to Adam to name, ate only plants. So, let me get this straight. Because of this original sin, it, it's, it's, it's basically human's fault that animals now eat meat. It, 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 that's what I'm gathering from it. Uh, are either of you getting that vibe? I, 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 I don't even... I just don't even... It's just, really? Really? It's... All animals used to be vegetarian. Okay. I just can't believe people are fucking dumb enough to believe this shit. Yeah, it's like, it's a like, cool story, bro. Now, uh, tell me the actual truth. You know, and, and use something other than the Bible to back up your claim. Yeah, all animals were vegetarians. Despite the fact that a lot of animals don't have the proper teeth to eat plants. No. They just don't. Uh, but, yeah, so that that's going to be it for for this time, because we're about time to get out of here. But if you want to go find it, just go find Things I Learned at the Creation Museum. I think it's 45 things I learned on BuzzFeed, if you want to take a look at the entire thing yourself. Um, and, and who and knows? if any of you can tell what that animal is that we can't identify, let us know. Yes, <laughs> please. I'm really curious now. Let us know in the comments. Email it. Twitter it at us. Let us know somehow, please. Inquiring minds want to know. And then we can tell the world and, and, and look smarter. I don't know. But uh, with that, we're going to get out of here for this week. Uh, thank you guys for listening. If you want to find me on the social medias, you can find me at gomer 21 X on Twitter. You can also find me on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And, of course, I also do have my Patreon page. I still accept patrons. In fact, one of them is sitting in the room with me right now. And uh, one of the reasons she has been over here is she is one of the $20 donators, uh, patrons, whatever you want to call them. And one of the things we've been discussing is you know, her, her ad because you, you – pledge $20 or more, you get some ad space on the site, which it's a good deal. I've done some shopping around that. You can't beat that for advertising. So, um, so there's that. And of course, money predominantly will go back into the site and go back into productions, and that sort of thing. So, um, so there is all of that. Again, if you know, the sites that I'm on, rtgomer.com, nerdvice.com, we have Facebook pages, we have Twitter accounts, follow us, like us, check out, the, check out all the producers on both sites, because we got some really good stuff between the two sites here. And uh, speaking of Nerdvice, our, our uh, lady head editor, where can we find you? You can find me at GookyGox, all over different social media, Tumblr, Twitter, all of that. Um, and that's G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. Uh, and check out my Etsy store, gookygox.etsy.com. Sweet. And where can we find Kat? 
Um, you can find me on Twitter at Labyrinth Cat and on Facebook uh, under Nerdist Cat. And you can find me on That Guy with the Glasses for my other show, Nerd to the Third Power, under the podcast tab. And then you can also hear me on uh, uh, Jackalope Radio on What the Fuck on Saturday nights. Yay! Oh, so again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and the Cat signing off. Bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.